Hey everybody, John Schumacher here with NewWaveHealthcare.com, where digital health companies come to share their stories. And today I'm joined by Rishi Amaravakar and Stephen Chow, uh, co-founders of Doctor Quickly, a mobile application that's bringing telemedicine to you via your mobile application, mobile device, uh, where you can basically have a doctor in your pocket and uh, bring up your doctor anytime and speak to them via video, audio, or chat. So it's a pretty neat product. It's a startup company. We're going to be talking about their company today, a little bit about mHealth, and a little bit about telemedicine. But before we do that, let's just have, have Rishi, who's the CEO of the company, and Steven tell us just a little bit about their own personal background, and then, guys, we'll jump into your business. Yeah, hi, John. Uh, hi, John. It's uh, good to see you. And uh, yeah, so thanks for giving us this opportunity uh, to talk to you regarding our uh, new uh, startup. So uh, Doctor Quickly is uh, basically a startup which came out from a need and necessity from our personal experiences. And uh, the way it started was my wife uh, started, uh, she's, we are expecting a baby and she started having pain uh, at the middle of the night. And we were trying to reach to a practitioner nurse or a doctor through phone uh, at 2 a.m. at night. And it was getting really hard for us to reach to someone. So we decided, ended up driving to the emergency care. Uh, and uh, we had to wait for like four hours till we got uh, an answer from a doctor. And she's, she looked at my wife and she said, like, she's absolutely fine. She just needs to take some Advil and rest. So we ended up losing our whole night and even the subsequent day. And the problem was, like, we weren't able to reach someone when we really needed them. And we okay. lost a lot of time. So that's when I thought of having a solution, which is Dr. Quickly, where you can have live streaming of video using your smartphone as quick as possible and get a brief consultation with your doctor when you really need them. Right. So that's, that's Dr. Quickly. Perfect. So boil that down a little bit for us and hit us with your elevator pitch. Sure. So Dr. Quickly is doctor in your pocket. And what that means is uh, we are bringing re reinventing telemedicine uh, and bringing it as a mobile first approach. And the way we are doing it is by having solutions on hands on mobile, like our like your iPhone, where you would be able to use it, uh, let's say at 2 a.m. at night, and have a live consultation through video to your doctor uh, immediately. And we are having a business model set up such way that doctors have incentive to pick up the phone call uh, late nights as well. And not only this video, we are uh, also letting audio, voice based calling, all those facilities that a person needs uh, for a portable disruptive telemedicine solution uh, and more uh, affordable as well for people with insurance and people without insurance as well. Right. So, so you, you kind of described this already, but as far as some of the key problems you guys are looking to address, I think you, you talked a little bit about obviously the lack of accessibility, the time involved in reaching a doctor all those things that are common problems in our, our healthcare system today that telehealth in general is looking to address and, and solve. Uh, speak more specifically about some of the, the problems you're specifically out to solve when it comes to the, the mobile and the telehealth uh, sure. combination. Yeah. So telehealth has been there for 40 years, uh, as we all know. It's been there for a, for a long time now. Uh, the problem with telehealth has been that people haven't been using uh, using it for mainstream and it hasn't uh, had the penetration as expected and there were many reasons for that like uh, pre there were a lot of uh, legislation legislative issues state laws uh, all the uh, legalities involved in uh, telemedicine that's the reason why and, uh, that's the reason why it didn't grow up the re the way we want to make it now because of the affordable care act uh, recently passed it has pushed more uh, more focus towards telemedicine for affordable solutions for telemedicine. So what our solution does is uh, it allows you to use your, uh, the way it, it makes use of your handheld devices more, uh, which, we, which are the most frequent ones and more convenient ones for a, a patient to be used for a cheaper and affordable healthcare consultation. So if you see, there is already uh, 8 out of 10 of your medical uh, consultations when you go for inpatient uh, consultation with your doctor are more for trivial uh, use cases where you have a sore throat, where you have a headache, where you have fever, which really don't need to be uh, having a diagnostic at the location of the uh, healthcare facility. 
and you end up losing a lot of time and money uh, in, uh, involved in uh, answering this kind of uh, healthcare problems. So these kind of problems are going to be more uh, offloaded from uh, healthcare facilities to uh, telemedicine solution where uh, solutions uh, like handheld devices or uh, streaming video through laptop devices that would be taking care of uh, those kind of use cases so that not only it becomes affordable for the patient but also for the healthcare providers and the insurance companies by uh, using the uh, resources for some real uh, use cases for patients who really need those uh, healthcare facilities. So is the, is the main difference, that, you know, are you guys the only ones doing this via mobile or because I mean I know there's a lot of telehealth services that are emerging. Um, yeah. Can you speak about that as far as, I mean, are you guys one of the first to bring it onto a mobile device or are there other competitors in that market space? Like speak about that specific market space. Yeah. So there are already competitors. Uh, the, the good part is there are not many competitors on mobile since the mobile platform has disrupted like, I, uh, like with iOS and Android. There are hardly a couple of uh, like uh, like you can count on uh, like just a couple of uh, competitors uh, in the market which have got pretty good reviews as well, which has validated our market standing. Uh, so there is a competitor which recently launched a couple of months ago, and they had uh, raised funding from Google uh, and pretty good venture capitalist firm in Silicon Valley. So uh, and so those kind of solutions, there are already a couple of them. We are differentiating ourselves with some innovative solutions. We are the first ones to be having telemedicine conference not only from handheld device to a uh, laptop uh, like streaming live but also uh, handheld to handheld devices so mm -hmm. not only a doctor maybe a doctor is on vacation and he uh, he's uh, it's a sunday and he's with his family and he has a patient who has a chronic uh, serious uh, issue which needs to be addressed immediately and he can use our device and uh, a doctor can pick up his phone call and have a live face to face uh, streaming consultation not only that, we are also a uh, first open platform where we are taking care of the whole payments integration as well as a part of the whole solution. Otherwise, FaceTime would be enough for whole telemedicine solution, but we are not only uh, providing uh, HIPAA compliant uh, video solution and audio and messaging solution, plus we are integrating the payment channels so that doctors get their fair share for giving those uh, time sensitive consultations using telemedicine, using the, uh, using all these innovative solutions. So that way we have disrupted ourselves different and differentiated ourselves differently. So let me see if I get it right then. Uh, so you guys have differentiated yourself because you're, you're, you're of the interoperability of, of your platform, is that is that correct? Yes, yes, that's exactly right. And so other, other competitors in the space um, simply just don't have the ability to go what, mobile to mobile, mobile to laptop, mobile to tablet, is, is that correct? Yes. Or? Yeah, so telemedicine has been there, uh, as we said, a long time. People used, uh, people used uh, laptops for uh, consultations with their doctors. Uh, there are some many competitors which are on the desktop market uh, where they would be able to co communicate with doctors. So the problem is the desktop penetration isn't that high as compared to mobile. That's why we want to be mobile first approach. We want to be similar to like Uber for cab taxi cabs where Uber disrupted the whole experience using your mobile handheld phones, how you, could, how you could pay a taxi cab driver, how you could rate and review. So our whole experience using your mobile device is going to be so different and smooth that the user is going to be uh, not only getting the information that he needs, but he's also going to get a very different and smooth experience, which he never got through uh, like the devices like laptops and stuff, which we, which we used before. Right. Talk about the market space for, for mHealth and, and tele, telemedicine. Uh, can you give us some metrics on those markets? So, uh, like medical, uh, telemedicine market itself is uh, growing, like uh, current 2012 it was $9 billion and it's projected to go to $27 billion. So the market is actually growing really rapidly, almost 35% year over year. And uh, mobile health specifically, they have been 95 million users in US itself who are using uh, mobile health solutions now already in, uh, by, by some way either cell phones making calls to the practitioners and uh, and so how and uh, we have seen a lot of trend of doctors uh, on getting on board to this telemedicine on or mobile health solutions they have been inclined uh, a lot like uh, like the solutions which are already in mobile uh, space almost 4500 doctors have already signed up in US itself to be on these mobile platforms wow. so that they, they can not only give a uh, what is a uh, exclusive service for their follow-up patients, but also that they could make more 
revenue channels or more incentives for providing a uh, better healthcare solution. Right. So how are the doctors taking this whole tele telemedicine movement? It's been around a while. It's starting to become more prevalent, as you said, and, and there's a bigger push for these things with the Affordable Care Act and things like that. Are you, um, what, how, how is their receptivity when you come up to them and talk to them about telemedicine? So doctors are really welcoming the whole, uh, the whole new disruption and wave of telemedicine. The problem what doctors are facing right now and is, uh, is because of various legislative uh, dependencies and uh, the multi-state telemedicine uh, program that's, that's still not uh, worked out in the uh, in United States yet. So we are actually helping out some uh, state legislative uh, le legislatures in Louisiana, for example. They they want to uh, push forward for insurance companies to be able to reimburse for telemedicine solutions. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of so, uh, these are kind of uh, problems that uh, telemedicine is getting uh, limited accessibility because of this. So, uh, but we would be seeing more and more uh, like Medicare and uh, Medicare and Medicaid are also trying to. Uh, they have taken some steps towards telemedicine after the Affordable Care Act. So we are seeing more and more legislative and uh, those kind of regulation, regulatory changes coming up uh, for uh, telemedicine specific because some states they allow only uh, doctors licensed in their own states to provide telemedicine solutions to the patients residing in that state. So there are state regulations that are still binding uh, or uh, which are causing problems for telemedicine to be a disruptive force throughout the country. Yeah, you took my next question, man. I was I was going to be it was uh, <laughs> tell, me, tell me about uh, you know the state you know boundaries and stuff. So I'm assuming you guys are focused in California, then is that correct? Yeah, so we are going to be deploying our solution uh, phase in different phases. Uh, we are going to be deploying it specifically uh, California uh, as our first uh, milestone, and uh, and we are also focusing specifically on childcare and uh, pediatrics uh, initially. So we are going to bring in, uh, because what we feel is we want to uh, bring uh, the most of the consultations which are time sensitive are when let's say your child is crying and you need to talk to a doctor or, or like from my own experience, uh, pregnancy related co consultations which come pretty frequently and which come mostly off hours, uh, not during the uh, on hours time frame. So we are going to be focusing that way so that a patient can get the best experience for those kind of things and then we'll be expanding into different horizontals and different states all together as well. All right, sounds good. So so what stage is your guys' um, business and product at at this point? So we are at beta stage uh, right now. Uh, we have been uh, working on this project. Me and Steve have been working pretty hard. We both are techies, so <laughs> we are uh, not coming from the medical background as a, uh, as, uh, as such. So uh, so we, uh, we are in beta stage. We are uh, experimenting our solution uh, with uh, some of our doctors uh, and uh, we are getting their initial feedback that that that's what we are incorporating in our solution and uh, once that's done uh, by April of first week of April or second week of April we'll be live uh, for uh, in public for doctors to join us as our standalone uh, application so we have a standalone application solution and we have a white label service approach as well uh, our first strategy and milestone is to go standalone and uh, have private practitioners join us and patients with and without insurance join us and then we have a white label service where we will provide the solutions to, to say Palo Alto Medical Foundation or Kaiser Permanente where they would use us and they will white label and use our uh, engine for their follow up patients for their uh, healthcare providers specifically as a private network and we would have a different business model there as well. Yeah, talk about your business model a little bit. So you have you have a standalone application and you have a white label service. Are you doing say like a, just a one time fee for the for the standalone app and then a subscription model for the uh, white label, or, or what are you doing as, as far as monetizing this project? Yeah, so uh, stand standalone application is gonna be uh, direct one to one communication between patient and doctor. We are giving doctors flexibility to set their own prices. In fact, we are giving an innovative solution where the doctors might set a different price during the daytime and the doc and have a differential pricing for the nighttime consultations. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on your call, uh, we will have a runtime pricing. And we will well, let's say you spoke for 30 minutes based on the per minute charge of the doctor. That's the only ex specific amount you will be charged to talk to a doctor. So there won't be a subscription-based model for a patient. So patients are going to use it only when they need it. 
And um, for uh, uh, white label services, we are going to have a business to business model where we will be uh, having a uh, business deal with, say, Palo Alto Medical Foundation to have either a monthly subscription or based on the number of seeds they are going to be using uh, for deploying our solutions to them. Sounds good. So you guys are B2B and, and B2C, both in the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, so first focusing on B, uh, B2C, and then uh, once we have a proven track record, we'll go for B2B. Sounds good. So, yeah. so tell, tell, talk to us about some of the biggest challenges. I mean, if, I'm sure there's you know, other people are going to hear this that are that are around the telemedicine industry, and you're obviously in the, in that startup phase, getting ready to push it out. Um, talk about what was the biggest challenge you faced when you were as you were building this project, uh, this product, and and figuring out what you needed to do to put this together. So uh, the biggest, first biggest challenge was we both we, we both are coming from technology background. Uh, since Silicon Valley, everybody uh, <laughs> is is mostly techy and less. Uh, uh, so w initially, when we started this whole uh, project, we were planning to go widespread to different domains. We were like, let's have a solution which is for legal, medicine, or uh, real estate together. And we never realized that medicine itself is a huge domain which has tons of regulations and lots of uh, Challenges not only just regulate, regulation wise but also on uh, implementation wise of those uh, uh, solutions. So when we realized that we had to focus on a specific domain uh, and we chose medicine, we both were coming from a non-medicine background. So we had to take some uh, smart advices from many uh, healthcare uh, experts and uh, advisors uh, who are part of our team now and uh, who are CIOs and CTOs of many healthcare uh, preventive healthcare companies. So they gave us pretty good idea about what we need to lay out first before even deploying our solution. So most of our time went in like, say, compliance rules, HIPAA compliances, making sure the data is secure for patients, making sure that uh, the, the whole video streaming is secure. All those kind of solutions uh, had to be integrated in our uh, product. And uh, apart from that, we also needed to understand the regulatory issues of how, what are the liabilities for a doctor when he's using a telemedicine solution. Uh, what kind of solutions we might provide for the doctors, like uh, malpractice uh, practitioner uh, insurance, st stuff like that, so that doctors are more comfortable coming on board on us uh, with us. And uh, so those were the key challenges. Uh, and uh, making this whole disruptive video streaming. Initially, we were focusing only on audio consultations, uh, like using voice-based calling or using. But then we realized that video is the next generation, like the next big thing. That everything is gonna go like people driving uh, their cars to their hospitals for no, uh, trivial issues is going to stop. People are going to start using the handheld devices to talk to their doctor. And in this age and time, you should be able to reach a doctor, even if it's middle of the night or to uh, like any time, uh, if you are ready to uh, like help compensate for your consultation. Right. So that was our motivation for being all that. Yeah, it's much needed, definitely. And it is starting to grow, but it's still pretty slow to be taken up by a lot of companies. I mean, if you have a sick kid at night and, and, and you need to speak to a doctor in a few minutes, I mean, to have to, like, find that information online, freak out about it all night, it'd be so nice and convenient to be able to just get to a doctor. Most medical issues are non-emergencies, and, like, so many of our, like, hospitals and, and, and emergency rooms are filled full of, like, non-emergency issues. So I think it, from not only from a convenience standpoint, but from a cost-effective standpoint for the healthcare system, telemedicine is, is going to be huge, and being able to talk to a doctor like that is is just it's just more efficient and it's it's yeah. crazy that we can we can talk to each other like this but it's oh you can't talk to a doctor no you can't do that yet so um. and that's the, that's one of the reasons why uh, the prices of healthcare have been rising as well is mm -hmm. because of this exclusivity of uh, and uh, hardship for reaching to a doctor and that's the one of the reasons why doctors are not that accessible to a, a patient and they have to pay extra cost just for a basic issue or just for giving or getting a basic consultation with their doctors. Yeah. So they want to make sure it's doctors are accessible and uh, through different technology means. And medicine has been a market where technology hasn't touched uh, that well. So this yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that's, that's really advanced in medicine is diagnostics. I mean, we have excellent diagnostics in a lot of ways, but as far as like our, our workflow management and things like that, or, or like you said, like you guys are doing with the telemedicine, it's just way, way, way behind. So hopefully that'll get kicking. Um, what do you guys see the future of your company, like the vision for the future? Can you talk about that? Sure. So the vision for the future is we see video is going to take over the world. Like we, we see that face-to-face -face yes. consultations are going to go away. 
<laughs> yeah, and uh, be, people are going to be more uh, using their handheld devices, multiple devices to be able to reach, uh, to be able to communicate with uh, not only just like you and me, but like with real people uh, who are experts in specific domains, uh, like doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, all those kind of, of uh, different mediums. So video is going to take out not only that, but uh, we also see that handheld devices for medicine specific might be more capable in future. Let's say like uh, there are there are companies like uh, Breathometer who are who can uh, specifically let you know the alcohol level in your mm -hmm. uh, in your in your body just by using your iPhone and their hardware. That guy just spoke at the Silicon Valley event uh, last month. Yeah, okay. I think I can't remember his name, but yeah, he was on the Shark Tank and everything. That yes, guy, yes, yes, he, he, he was impressive. Yeah. What's that? We, we we had a pretty good chat with him. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's pretty. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he was also pretty interested in uh, what we were up to. So we, we see that they, they, then we met one one more company who is trying to do portable uh, blood pressure uh, measurement and uh, portable uh, like they, so there will be companies coming up in future where uh, everything can be a home kit uh, and uh, it will be more plug and play kind of solution on your on your device on your phones for example so plugging it into something like telemedicine and our solution is gonna just change the world like if you have your phone where you can take your blood uh, pressure or your blood test uh, or some uh, like alcohol level your uh, all those conditions you you won't even need to go to a hospital for all those uh, use cases and you would be uh, and this this can happen any time of the day so yeah. this is the future that we feel yeah. I agree yep so so what's your growth strategy for for scaling your business you guys are about to launch um, how are you Growing your network, or what's your plan to grow your network and scale out? So that's a good question. So growth strategy, we had been doing these strategies for a long time, and uh, now we feel that uh, since the product is uh, is is, uh, is ready, we uh, we are planning to launch the product uh, in uh, in next month. And apart from that, we're gonna be raising funding for so that we can increase expand our team. So far, it's just me and Steve working on this uh, product day and night. So it's pretty uh, uh, and so we have to make sure that we have more uh, potential in terms of uh, manpower so yeah. we are going to be increasing that way and uh, by hiring more people marketing and operations as well so that we can reach as many doctors as possible sure. and apart from that yeah we will be marketing ourselves uh, into different uh, healthcare specific domains uh, right. so that we have more audiences how do you yeah. guys how are you guys funding this or are you guys bootstrapping it or what are you doing there so right now we are bootstrapping. So we are the. So this is our second company actually. Uh, we we had a previous company and we decided to do this more seriously. And uh, so we are bootstrapping. Uh, we were focusing uh, heavily on our product development so far, and now we are out for fundraising. From now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was my next question. Is what are you guys looking for right now? Are you guys looking for other team members, money, all of that, like. Uh, all of that, like looking for uh, so uh, the so far since we both are the co-founders, we are first looking for funding. Uh, we are looking for uh, some convertible note funding uh, around five hundred thousand dollars, and we will be hiring more people based on that funding, and uh, then ha having more. For us, uh, manpower is more required because this solution requires uh, uh, not the technology aspect, but for us to be able to reach as many healthcare providers or health uh, or pra practitioners as possible so that they come on board with our solution and much more face-to-face face-to-face uh, -face deals have to be done so we need more manpower for, for that. What kind of metrics are you guys using to, to measure things right now? So in uh, so when you say metrics is it uh, for uh, the growth rate or? Yeah I think what you put down you put um, well you gave me a, a little note earlier but um, I think you said you know like um, like feedback and length of calls and different things. Like, how are, you, how are you? What are your quality metrics, or what are you using to 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 say yes, this is going in the right direction? You know. Yeah. So, uh, like in terms of our solution, what we as as I said, we wanted to be an Uber for doctors, right? So way the way Uber is working is because they have a really good uh, feedback mechanism uh, between their uh, users uh, and uh, so, so that they are creating a community of. Uh, Users where they are driving uh, the feedbacks are driving the their efficiency well. So we have a very strong. We we will be we are already having a feedback mechanism in our solution where once your consultation is complete, you can directly uh, give a feedback for your con specific consultation or give a customized feedback with your doctor. That's one of the basic indications whether 
this doctor has been uh, able to uh, respond well to a patient's uh, needs or not. So based on that, we are also going to be ranking the doctors uh, so that they have a sense of uh, responsibility and liability that they need to be pretty responsive when they're, they're, when someone is expecting uh, to talk to them, let's say even off hours. So those kind of uh, metrics are going to help drive their performance. Apart from that, uh, let in, uh, do, when we are so providing white label solutions, we want to make sure that uh, we provide uh, like uh, white label solutions. We want to make uh, like we want to provide some matrices to say Palo Alto Medical Foundation that this doctor was able to answer this patient's co consultations at middle of the night, or these many calls were answered by this doctor, so that they can that can be used as a bonus, uh, right. so, like some bonus for the doctor through the through their healthcare provider. All right. So yeah, as we're getting towards the end uh, of, the, of the conversation, uh, Stephen, do you want to you want to add anything on, on to what Rishi's saying, or is he is he covering it pretty well? Is he doing a good job? Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't, don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> he, he's got it. He's got it covered. Or yeah, I was just gonna say also for the uh, for what Rishi just covered um, about the feedback or um, what other metrics we're going to look at, also the length of time that. Um, a call has been made, and the, the longer that we'll see the trends on how long the length of the calls are, and also we'll look at like the pricing structure of what doctors want to set. Uh, all that will be taken into account about like how well um, the ecosystem is working out and what changes need to be made to make it better. Right. I mean, the longer people are on the calls, you know, the, you're thinking that it's quality right. for them, right? It's going to be helpful right. for them if they're if they're on there and they get off pretty quick. You're like, well, maybe we need to look at something. Yeah. Um, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, what's so important about um, this model is the openness, having doctors being able to come on board, having uh, patients be able to choose which doctor they want to call. Not only that, but being able to read. Um, what they, you know, like a little bit about them, what their specialties are, and be able to re look at the reviews before actually making the call. That's uh, sure. what differentiates us from everybody else. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, here's the last question of their interview, and it's a little bit of a doozy, so maybe you guys would think about it a little bit. But uh, let me just hit you with it here. So let's say the affordable, you woke up tomorrow and the Affordable Care Act added another new piece of legislation and it was geared for your company, what would you want it to read? Uh, we would say that there should be a multi-state telemedicine program and where uh, a, a doctor from California should be able to give a medical consultation for a doctor in New York, for a patient in New York. So the whole telemedicine borderline has to be removed and the complexity of each state-wise legislation uh, or uh, making it more on the Country-wise, or federal uh, state legisl federal legislation for the telemedicine would help us tremendously yeah. in growing uh, the I, company. I agree. I agree. You'll see, though. I, 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 my understanding of that situation is there's quite a bit of money and some politics involved with <laughs> with licensures and stuff like that across yeah. states. So and we'll and see. Also, yeah, and also that insurance companies should be on board now, so that they would be covering up the cost for telemedicine consultations. Uh, in, in long run, it's actually in, not even long, short term as well, it's helping them uh, by providing cheaper costs and expenses for them. Perfect. Yeah. Well said, well said. So guys, as we wrap up here, um, let's just tell our viewers where they can find out more about you guys and then we'll say goodbye. Sure. So uh, our product is called Dr. Quickly. Uh, the website is pretty simple, uh, www.drquickly.com. And we will soon be having our app on App Store. Uh, it will be called Dr. Quickly. And uh, you can easily reach us on Facebook, uh, Dr. Quickly, or Twitter as well, and follow us. And we'd love to see uh, the feedback from uh, users. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on today and sharing your story and talking about your company and a couple of really important industries there. Yes. Um, it's important to talk about these things. I think you, you said it very well. So I appreciate your guys' time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and so I hope everybody enjoyed that conversation. Uh, a lot of good information on kind of the pieces behind creating a telemedicine company and some good facts about those industries as well. Uh, we'll have a replay of this interview. If you're listening to us on iTunes, go over to newwavehealthcare.com forward slash doctor quickly and you'll get a recording of the video conversation, of course the audio, 
all the links to Dr. Quickly and, and Rishi and Steve and all, all of their contact information. Uh, so go over there, check it out. Uh, it will be newwavehealthcare.com forward slash Dr. Quickly. Uh, if you're watching this on video, go ahead and click on the, the uh, iTunes tab on the, in the sidebar of the website, the newwavehealthcare.com website, and check us out on iTunes. If, you, if you're looking to listen to something in your car or at the gym, we have interviews every single week where we interview people who are hot and fresh in the healthcare industry. So check us out there, subscribe to it, leave us a nice rating and review. And I think that's it for today. Um, I will see you guys at the next interview.